breakdown of today's game and the exclusive comments from head coach Jim Harbaugh are coming your way on the pregame show. This is Michigan football from Learfield IMG College. Wherever your family calls home, Blue Cross is here for you. By supporting and building healthy communities in every zip code, we're providing a healthier future for all of Michigan. For 81 years, we've kept this promise to help strengthen our neighbors, to stand by their side during the moments they need us most. We're here for it all and always will be. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Confidence comes with every card. To learn more, visit hereforitall.com. DTE makes it easy for all customers to score a renewable energy touchdown. When you join My Green Power, you help build more wind and solar parks in Michigan. No rooftop installation needed. It's the fastest and most affordable way to speed us toward a cleaner future while protecting the environment for generations to come. Join today at migreenpower.com. That's migreenpower.com. A cleaner future is just a click away. Are you a Wolverine for life? Do you have the guts to get recruited to a team that will beat Ohio State? When you choose to become an organ, blood, or bone marrow donor, you're choosing to help save a life and to be someone's hero. Join us Sunday, November 1st, and be a hero at U of M by donating blood or registering as an organ or bone marrow donor at a convenient Ann Arbor location. Sign up now at wolverinesforlife.org and help us beat Ohio State in the annual battle for life-saving donations on November 1st. Visit wolverinesforlife.org and register today. Today tastes like game day at home, like assigned couch seating, <laughs> tastes like coffee table dining, and an ice cold Coke to cool down the heat. It tastes like the game you've waited for all week with friends you've known your whole life. <laughs> Today tastes like watching football is supposed to. We are set for Michigan and Michigan State. The Paul Bunyan Trophy. This one feels different. This is what rivalries are. They don't like each other. In Michigan, it's a tale as old as these woods. And this year, on Devil's Night, we'll go to bed with dreams of Paul Bunyan Paul in our Bunyan heads. Two our teams room. will hit that field knowing only one can leave holding Paul high. Every time these rivals meet, it's history and it's high stakes. I believe all the cliches when it comes to rivalry games. You gotta throw the records out. What better time for a game like this? What better place to write a new chapter, to find new heroes, to get a win, and make a statement? Right, Hunter, Let's go play great today. To prove what we know. I was by the, the best players in Michigan go to Michigan, period. This team is coming for Paul. This team is coming for you. Go Blue! Michigan football and today we have a treat for all of you along the radio network Michigan takes on the Michigan State Spartans in the annual battle for states bragging rights it's a brawl it's Michigan versus Michigan State the green and white against the maize and blue Dan Deardorff my partner NFL Hall of Famer Michigan All-American it doesn't get a whole lot better than this scenario with these two rivals no this is in a beautiful sunny day uh, barely a cloud in the sky, and yeah, it's uh, 
considering that the world in which we live right now with this pandemic going on, that you don't know 24 hours before kickoff whether the game is actually going to happen or not. You never – it's just – it's it's the way the world is right now. So I'm just delighted to be here. You know, every one of these kids, uh, especially the ones from the state of Michigan, this, this – <laughs> Ever since they were little, they've looked forward to being able to play in a game like this. Some of these kids recruited by both schools. So yep. you know that inside, the butterflies are really flipping, and these kids want a piece of that other school because they chose to go to one or the other. Well, it's a fulfillment it's a, it's of a, a lifelong dream. It's a special day for them. Yeah. And the one thing we'll tell you is, that Michigan has won three of their last four, but Michigan State has won eight of the last 12. Jim Harbaugh, the head coach for the Wolverine, is three and two against Michigan State in his five years. And Mel Tucker is getting his first coaching, head coaching job against Michigan in this game, although he was a graduate assistant for Nick Saban when Saban was the head coach at Michigan State. But in his first battle against Michigan, he knows about this rivalry. Well, sure he does, and that's it. You, you, you couldn't get the job without uh, expressing that. And, you know, they had a very frustrating loss last week uh, at home against Rutgers. And uh, I'm sure Mel Tucker has probably spent a little time this week just thinking to himself, how sweet would it be if my very first win as Michigan State's head coach would come against, and by the way, he kept referring to us as the team down, down the, road. the road. Hey, Mel, I got news for you. That that card's already been played in Columbus. <laughs> huh? You're you're a little late to the party with that. That bus has left town. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> he's, uh, he's, originality, you get. You get. <laughs> <laughs> it's Michigan versus Michigan State. The one thing that Dan mentioned that I think everybody has mentioned, Michigan looked really impressive in their win against Minnesota. Michigan State, not so much against Rutgers. You don't expect to see that same Michigan State team out here today. Oh, no. And, and and they were in that Rutgers game, which is almost imp- impossible to do when you consider that you turn the ball over seven separate times. So I, I, I can't imagine their frustration level. And a lot of times frustration, at least in the beginning, uh, equates to great effort. So I would expect uh, at, at the beginning of this game, that Michigan State, which is wearing their all white with the green helmets, Jim, I can't imagine a scenario where they're not flying around like crazy people. Well, we're going to have Michigan, Michigan State, the 2020 version. Michigan Stadium, for the most part, be empty. The maximum number of fans here would be a thousand, and they aren't really fans. They're family members of players or staff on each team. That's what it looks like in the stands. We got a couple thousand cardboard cutouts. That, we got a couple thousand cardboard cutouts at each end zone. But the reality is, that's the world we live in. It'll be interesting to do that game. But no matter who's here, uh, you're listening, and the Paul Bunyan Trophy is on the line. That's coming up in about an hour. We'll have kickoff between Michigan and Michigan State. In the meantime, stay tuned because Doug Karsh and John Jansen will bring you along to kickoff with a lot of interesting facts about this series and who's playing, who may not play based on injuries and what happened a week ago. What does each team bring to the table uh, in this matchup today? And also I'll be along with Jim Harbaugh in our interview for the pregame uh, about 50 minutes from now. So stay with us, everybody. Michigan, Michigan State coming up. This is Michigan football from Learfield IMG College. How are you? It's a huge deal. Um, I know in this building we're taking it, you know, as every other week. But for, for the kids from Michigan, especially on this team, this game, you know, means everything to us. It just really means everything for not only me, the guys on the team, but everyone who's ever stepped foot in Schembechler Hall along with all the fans because 
we want to go out there and, and make a make a statement for them. The history of it, just because you know it's two teams who who want that trophy like so bad, and uh, you know that they're willing to do anything to get it. So uh, you really just got to go out there and, and and put your heart on the line and just uh, and just go. Hutchinson, as most fans know, has a unique perspective, having heard all about it from his father, Chris, who played for the Wolverines from 1989 through 1992. Growing up and going to the games and, and kind of learning about the rivalry for Michigan State, uh, you know, it, it's something. But then playing in it is a completely different thing, you know. Uh, you, really, you really are able to feel it. Feel. It's what rivalry games are all about. It's just something about the game when you get out on that field that it is different and you can't really put your finger on exactly what it is. I felt the intensity uh, as, soon, as soon as we hit game week uh, in the tunnel day of the game. Uh, you, you just feel the intensity, you know, you know the, the blood between us and, and Michigan State and I'm just ready to go out there and compete, compete against them guys uh, on Saturday. All right, welcome back to the Big House. Doug Karsh back with you here on the Michigan Football Learfield IMG College Network alongside John Jansen, the two-time captain. It's Michigan and Michigan State. Two games, two trophy games, John. They secured the Little Brown Jug and now Paul Bunyan Trophy, which, by the way, since they removed it from the bookshelf, it's a lot more user-friendly because they can parade it around the field. Uh, it, makes a, it makes for better handles. <laughs> That's exactly right. Michigan State 0-1, stunning fashion last week, dropping a 38-27 decision to Rutgers. Really, the, the most stunning part is Rutgers last year in nine Big Ten games scored 51 points in nine games. Yeah. Scored 38 in week one off this Spartan D. A lot of transfers at Rutgers. Obviously, Greg Schiano's a new coach at Rutgers. Mel Tucker, new coach at Michigan State. I don't think anybody believed or, or thought going into that that Michigan State would have the, the – or Mel Tucker would have the outing that they had. But – they did, and they turned the ball over seven times. And I know we talked about this in, in the tailgate show, but, it, you know, when you look at turning the ball over seven times, you would think that they're going to lose by about 30 or 40. This offense was still productive for Michigan State. If they can find a way to eliminate the turnovers, this is going to be a tougher Michigan State team than I think most people expect. And here's the other thing. We all know this. In rivalries, teams can ascend to heights that they couldn't do on a normal old Saturday. And you did it. You guys did it when you played Ohio State every year when you were a player at Michigan State. Michigan has brought out the best in them, maybe not in the last couple of years, but under Mark D'Antonio it did, and this is Mel Tucker's first shot as head coach. The underdog is all in the minds of, of the underdog. We never thought going into those Michigan or those Ohio State games when I was playing that we were the underdog. We felt like we had the advantage. I don't know what the mental mindset of – Michigan State is going to be, but I do know that there's no pressure on them. All the pressure is on Michigan right now with the way that they played last year, last week. They, they have been built up to be a contender in the Big Ten. Michigan State's not, so they can go out and do whatever they want, and they can't lose. All right, for social distancing and, and staying safe, thanks to the MDEN, who brought me the mask. Yep, got a little can... neck, got you, you one too, neck gator, if I want to double up. Yeah, that way I'm you like, can stay nice and warm. I sound a little muffled, but uh, they're available at the M Den. Yeah, they're they're by Forever Collectibles, and thanks to the M Den for you know bringing us these. Dan and Jim have some as well. You can find them. Michigan M Den is the official retailer of all things Michigan athletics. They have provided these to all Michigan athletic teams. So you're going to see Jim Harbaugh wearing them. You saw them last week. You'll see the players when they're on the sidelines. If they're using them, they'll be using the same things. Just a reminder: if you're joining us on the radio, we're streaming live on MGoBlue.com. You can see the Wolverines warm up where we saw Dax Hill out there warming up earlier, which would be big for this Michigan defense. We'll hear from the quarterback, Joe Milton, next. You're listening to Michigan Football from Learfield IMG College. Ugh, I have to do laundry when I get All right, the Paul Bunyan Trophy. You've heard a lot about it over the years. Just to kind of re-educate you a little bit, the trophy was introduced back in 1953 as a way to welcome Michigan State into this rivalry. It stokes emotions from everybody, the players, the fans, the alumni, but especially the players, when they talk about this trophy, it just brings a little something else from deep inside them. We got it in the weight room, just as motivation every day when we walk in, and and you look at it, it's like, yeah, that, that's our trophy. Uh, we got we got to defend the trophy on Saturday. It's a real cool trophy, and we want to keep it uh, in the maze pants. I like the fact that there is a trophy involved with the game, so it gives us something to like look forward to and try to earn. So. I mean, we want to keep that in our locker room. We like seeing that every day. Man, that's probably like the best tr trophy ever. Just like off of, uh, 
like how big it is and like how much it means and how it was made, how it's like out of wood. It, it's just nice to me. It looks cool. It's better than any trophy I've ever seen before. The trophy itself really just represents uh, hard work, a guy who's a, a blue collar man, and that's, that's what we try to represent here at Michigan. So many elements go into a great rivalry, but then it all boils down to this. They don't like us, we don't like them. It just makes it special. You know, everybody so amped up for this game and you know, excited for the moment. Um, just happy to be a part of it. It's gonna be tough, it's gonna be gritty. It doesn't matter who they played or who we played because everyone's going to go at a different level this game because it's a rivalry game. Everyone wants that trophy, and, and you got to go and get it. Well, you've probably seen the cutouts all over the country at different sporting events. We got them here at the big house, about 3,500 of them, and you can get yours. Just go to mgoblue.com, check out all the details. Make your presence felt here at the big house despite your inability to be here in person. The privacy and reputation of your family. Preserve your life's work and protect your family. Set up a consultation today to speak to one of our family office experts by visiting Sandrowski Corporate Advisors at cca-advisors.com. Today's game is brought to you by C.S. Mott Children's Hospital and Sparrows Children's Center in Lansing, partnering to expand access to extraordinary care for all children. It's time now for the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan pregame interview and joining us Michigan quarterback Joe Milton. And uh, we've heard the buzz building about your development. When you first reported as a freshman, at what point did Joe Milton realize, hey, I can play at this level, I can do this? Um, it was more of my sophomore year, you know, my freshman year. Um, I was just getting a groove of it. Um, I was young and I just wanted to play. You know, I, um, I didn't really understand football as well as, well as I do now. You know, um, just like seeing everything slow down for me now is, is more impressive. And then when I look back at my freshman, I just see everything just moving too fast for my eyes. And, you know, seeing it slow down now is more, more my speed. That's interesting because the way you played this game against Minnesota, you looked relaxed. You looked like you had another gear. It did look like the game was slow for you. Did it feel like it was everything was slow for you? Yes, it did. You know, and um, I kind of like thank my offense line for that. You know, they they slowed they, they slowed the game down for me. You know, they did their job, and my receivers did their job too by getting the ball and just making yards. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about news earlier this week. The quarterback at Wisconsin is out with COVID. You being a quarterback, do you feel extra pressure to stay safe because so many people relied on you? Um, no, I don't because, you know, um, me as a person, I always stay inside. You know, I don't like, from where I'm from, I don't like getting, like, going outside because it's like, it's trouble out there. Anything can happen. So, me as a person, I just stay inside, so I feel no pressure. All right, let's talk about the offense. How much of it did we see last week? Is there a lot more you guys can showcase? Um, there's a lot more we can showcase. You know, that's just half of it. That's just the first quarter of it, you know, and we got more to come. So, What do the coaches talk to you about, whether it be Josh Gaddis or Coach McDaniels? What are they stressing that they'd like to see Joe Milton improve on? Um, everything, you know. Um, there's always room for improvement. Um, everything from throwing, from running, from seeing, like, different coverages, you know, it's just always room for improvement so they just like be on me about seeing certain things and doing it all right let's talk about michigan state when you've seen them on film what did you see with their defense um they're great they're smart um they're very fundamental you know um and they're ready to play joe melton thanks for your time good luck no problem thank you the michigan quarterback joe milton that's the blue cross blue shield of michigan pregame interview blue cross blue shield of michigan is committed to providing members access to the care they need whenever and wherever they need it blue cross is here for it all and always will be. You're listening to Michigan Football from Learfield IMG College. Green grass and high skies around Well, have you heard? Michigan's got a new quarterback this year. Guy wears number five. A guy named Milton. Spans is about six foot five. Clearly speaking, tongue in cheek because Big Joe Milton's been a huge topic of discussion during the offseason. We talked to him recently and he talked about what he worked on to get better. He talked about reading coverages, working on his touch, throwing into trash cans. But there's something else he talked about, and that something else is equally important. I worked on my leadership. 
uh, for the first thing, you know, trying to get my trust from my teammates, my offensive line, my receivers, running backs. Um, that was the biggest thing that I worked on. I'm more vocal now. I'm not scared to say something to someone if they're doing something wrong. You know, and I just feel like in order to be a leader, you needed that. Milton has labored methodically to get to this point. His three-year journey defined simply by the grind of getting better. Hard work and dedication is what it takes, you know. I'm as a person, I came from nothing. So, you know, all I know is work. All I grew up around is football. So um, my whole main goal is just to hard work, just Keep grinding no matter what. No, don't let nobody tell you that you can't do nothing because you always can if you put your mind to it. Milton begins his career as a starter under unusual circumstances, playing to mostly empty stadiums. His focus remains keen. The person I am and the team that we're becoming, we kind of block out all of the other things so we can focus on our main tax and that's winning. So I feel like with fans or without fans, we came here for one job and that's to win. You know, a true tell about a guy is when you talk to his teammates and the way they respond. Talk to big Jalen Mayfield, Joe's right tackle, earlier this week. And he was so impressed with Joe's offseason, the hard work he put in, and just the leadership and the skills he developed during that time. And Jalen said he was so proud of Joe and he's so excited for this upcoming season. We're also excited to tell you that you can submit your game day photos with the hashtag hell from home and we'll do our best to get them up here during our pregame show on the video board. The players are out there warming up. They may get a chance to take a look at them. There's some family members here. You might be able to inspire them as well. We'll be back down here shortly. Doug Karsh, John Jansen back at the Big House. Michigan to Michigan State will kick off just afternoon. Time for our offensive scouting report brought to you by the University of Michigan Credit Union. And, John, we start with Michigan's offense showcasing a lot of weapons. Joe Milton really spread it around, 8.59 yards per play, best in the nation after one whole football game. But uh, looks like Minnesota's defense might be pretty bad. Is That, that performance isn't aging with, with great no, – you, you no. hey, you like it. But they gave up over 10 yards of play last night yeah. at Maryland. Not a great resume builder, no. uh, you might put it. But, uh, you know, this Michigan offense, what I liked about it was that they didn't play down to Minnesota's level. I hope they don't play down to Michigan State's level. They have that opportunity today. It's about what Michigan does, executing from the quarterback position. He saw the field well, made good decisions, mainly in the run game, when to keep it, when to hand it off. Well, can they keep it going offensively? Here's Josh Gaddis. Yes, uh, you know, I think our kids did an extremely great job. And, and hats off to our, our assistant coaches uh, for teaching the kids the game plan, going through with the detail, uh, and allowing those kids to go out there and, and execute at a very high level. But, uh, you know, we're a very talented team. We've got a number of different players on offense that can help us. Obviously, when you have that many players, it's also it's also a challenge to trying to put all the pieces together. So, you know, hopefully we can continue to do that. And, you know, the thing that I was really proud about is the unselfishness of our players. You know, no one complained that they didn't get the ball enough. You know, everyone was happy about the success of each other. Let's talk about the quarterback. Joe Milton looked pretty good. You know, it's, it, the offensive line, I think, made it easy for him because what you really want to see – is ball security under pressure, and there wasn't a ton of pressure. There wasn't a ton of pressure, and they made it easy for him, and not in the pass game because that was, I mean, that's very easy to see. But in the run game, his ability to make the decision on when to hand the ball off, when to keep it, uh, I thought was it was very decisive by the offensive line to make that decision easy in terms of who was available and who wasn't on defense. Well, there's always stuff to improve on, and Gaddis tells us what's atop that list for Joe Milton. Joe played a really good game. You know, I think, uh, you know, you're going to be able to see his confidence grow. Um, you know, that was his first game experience, you know, really in, in the Big Ten. And so, you know, to see him go out there and see the composure that he played with, um, there's some plays that he wish he had back. There's some runs that he wish he had back. I'll tell you, there's a couple big runs that he kind of left some meat on the bones a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's where you grow as a, as a first-year player and a first-game starter. So we're really excited about him and, and what he showed in the poise, and we're looking to continue to build on it. As you heard him say earlier here in the pregame show, the game was slow for him. Now, sometimes that's because your opponent's slow, but he's one of those guys that is moving pretty fast, and it, it doesn't look like he's a fast runner, but he's effective. Well, and what Joe Milton did was he basically took all the safe outs. When you hear Josh Gaddis said he left a little meat on the bone, 
you know, and it's, he didn't want to make that mistake. He did, in his first outing, instead of cutting out a couple of times and running out of bounds, he could have cut the ball back inside and maybe gone for a lot more yardage on the ground. So it's up to him to be able to make those decisions. I'm okay with the safe decision, but there is a lot of meat left on that bone. All right, Michigan State's defense last week looked like a shell of its former self. Uh, didn't look like the Spartan dogs we grow accustomed to. Gaddis talks about this MSUD. You know, I saw an aggressive defense. You know, they blitzed at a, at a high number uh, last week versus Rutgers. Obviously, um, you know, uh, you know they played good defensively and, and kind of, you know, they had some offensive issues, but defensively they played pretty good. And so, you know, we know what to expect with an in-state rivalry game. Uh, you know, they're going to play their very best, you know, regardless of what happened last week. And uh, we're going to have to play our very best going against a good Michigan State team. Two guys to look out for in that D that I – pinpointed drew beasley defensive end linebacker antoine simmons and, and a couple more guys noah harvey and trey pearson when when josh gaddis says they blitzed a lot they came from a lot of different positions and and bringing trey pearson out of the secondary that's going to be a new look we did this offensive line did not see that from minnesota last week all right we do have some breaking news for the michigan offense nick eubanks who was not in uniform last week, is in uniform today down there for the Wolverines, number 82. We have yet to see if he will play, but he's going through full warm-ups, fully padded right now. Nick Eubanks, the Michigan tight end. That's today's offensive scouting report brought to you by the University of Michigan Credit Union. Visit umcu.org for all your financial needs. Our defensive scouting report is next. You're listening to Michigan Football from Learfield IMG College. Like these rival teams, we know your Michigan tough. All right, Michigan hosting Michigan State for the only the uh, in back-to-back years for the first time since 1967 and 1968. And you know these rivalries have an ebb and flow to them. Bo Schembechler lost his first year in 1969 and then ripped off seven consecutive wins. Michigan leads the all-time series 71-36-5, including a very decisive victory last year at the Big House. Last year, 11 inches of snow fell on Michigan Stadium a few days before the game, but it was cleared in time for the Wolverines to plow through the Spartans 44 to 10. It was the third largest margin of victory in the 67 year history of the Paul Bunyan Trophy battle. Senior quarterback Shea Patterson threw for a career best 384 yards and four touchdowns. Ronnie Bell had a career day as well, catching nine passes for 150 yards. Nick Eubanks, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Nico Collins, and Cornelius Johnson caught touchdown passes for Michigan. After scoring the first touchdown of the game in the first quarter, MSU was held to a field goal the rest of the way, and Michigan's defense gave up just 11 yards rushing in the second half. I get to leave here, um, leave this great university, being up 3-1 on a team like this, a uh, hard-fought team, you know, and just being able to have my teammates, you know, feel that love and, you know, be in the locker room and, you know, cheering ch- cheering each other on, you know, that just means a, it just means the world to me. We came out here, fought hard all game, um, you know, and, and it feels really good. It's, like we said earlier in the week, it's, it feels like a state championship, and, you know, right now it feels like we won the state championship. That was super fun. Just enjoy that win with uh, my brothers on the team, and um, the way we beat them just made it even better, and, uh, yeah, ultimately, it was, it, was, it was a very fun experience. Well, it's fun seeing all those smiles, fun seeing the Paul Bunyan Trophy. One thing we won't be seeing this year is snow because the weather is going to be about 40 degrees and sunny skies, a perfect late autumn day for football here at the Big House. And speaking of late autumn, it's Halloween, right? Michigan's playing on Halloween for the 20th time in program history, 14-4-1, their all-time record. Big House event will be held tomorrow, November 1st. Due to the pandemic, blood drives will be held at both the Kensington Hotel and the Graduate Ann Arbor. Visit wolverinesforlife.org for more information. A reminder, we are streaming live through Michigan's Facebook page. Shots from inside the Big House as you see the Wolverines get warmed up. Also through mgoblue.com. Doug Karsh, John Jansen, time for the defensive scouting report. And Don Brown's crew gave up some pretty big yards on the ground but came up with some huge stops in the red zone. But, uh, the, the, the running game, you know, stop of the run. Ibrahim had over 200 yards rushing last night, so yeah. that might be a pretty good rushing attack, and that, that may be a performance that, that ages better. But the bottom line is Michigan State 
hasn't run it, but I'm sure they're going to test Michigan's run defense today. Well, again, it's about building off what they did last week. And the concerning part is that that was an area of concern last year. We didn't see it get fixed in the opening game against Minnesota last week. What are they going to do this week? I don't even know that this week would be a good measure because Michigan State last week was so poor at running the ball. Five sacks for the Michigan defense. It's one game, but five would rank first in the nation in sacks per game. But Don Brown certainly likes his pass rush. Yeah, you know, we got around it really good. Um, done some nice things there. Uh, you know, we got a lot of, you know, specialty type guys that can uh, go in there and uh, help us uh, chase the quarterback around, which is a, it's a fun, that's, that's the fun part of the day. Um, but I, I was really pleased with, uh, with, our, with our, you know, the, the ability to stay in front of the quarterback and not let him run out of there. Uh, especially in game one, those are kinds of things that happen. You give up a big gash of a 25, 30 yard run or whatever. And we had none of that. I mean, our pressure was frontal. It put him in a phone booth and uh, gave us a chance to uh, get around the quarterback and make plays in the air. One of Don Brown's new toys on defense, Viper Michael Barrett, the former high school quarterback with his 4 4 speed and nose for the ball. Man, was he good. Here's Brown. Yeah, he's fun. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Um, there's a particular defense that we have, and uh, at times we've subbed in for him on it. And he actually said to me, Coach, don't sub for me. I'm going to make it happen. And uh, Confucius says, listen to your players because he made it happen. That's for sure. That was a great play he made. And him and Donovan Jeter, it was like they uh, planned it out. So it was great. That was great for our guys. Did Confucius say he's a dude? <laughs> because that's what it sounded like to me. Boy, has he got a nose for the ball. He really does. And, you know, when you talk about, Don Brown said in that first clip that we heard, keeping the defense of the quarterback in front of you, how frustrating has it been at times where you get pressure on a quarterback, but you don't get him on the ground, and then he escapes for a first down? We didn't see that. Tanner Morgan last year was actually pretty good at doing that. And when you have players like, Michael Barrett, that have a nose for the ball, that have a nose for or a knack for getting to the quarterback, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Michigan State put up some big yards through the air. Of course, the seven turnovers. The Mel Tucker says they want to be a ground and pound team, but Rocky Lombardi, 315 yards last week. Yeah, they want to be a ground and pound team because we saw him go, what was it, uh, four plays in a row uh, and not convert on fourth down. I don't know that we'll see that today. They are going to have to go through the air, and if they become one-dimensional, that's going to be the key for, for Michigan State is they can't be that one-dimensional team. They're going to have to be able to get something going on the ground because, like you mentioned earlier, Michigan right now leads the nation in sacks per game. Don't allow Quiddy Pay, Aiden Hutchinson, Michael Barrett to pin their ears back because they, they are really good at getting after the passer. All right, that's our defensive scouting report. John Jansen's keys to the game next, and later you'll hear from the head coach of the Wolverines, Jim Harbaugh. You're listening to Michigan Football from Learfield IMG College. I'm pretty sure our new house might be home. All right, Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh calls this the state championship, and they're going to do it for the 113th time. He also talked very finely about his team earlier this year, about the oneness that it's exhibited, about the oneness that he seems with this club, and it's got him very, very excited for this 2020 campaign. Uh, he also talked about staying prepared. The players talked about staying prepared. They talked a lot about that leading up to this season because for a long time there, they weren't sure what was going to happen well, we have football, and Michigan certainly looked more than prepared last week when they blew out Minnesota 49-24 in Minneapolis. You see the players on the field getting ready for the game today. There is big Joe Milton. Uh, Joe Milton looked so poised, so confident last week against the Golden Gophers, and he told me earlier that, you know, this is an opportunity he's been preparing for his entire life. He's excited for it. He wants to be the quarterback at Michigan. And kind of a funny story, when I asked him about the reasons he chose Michigan, one of the things he talked about was the cold weather. He's from Florida. He wanted to play in cold weather, especially because he says at the next level, you got to play in places like Chicago and Green Bay and New England. And he was very excited to kind of uh, add that to his repertoire, so to speak. So the Wolver that Michigan offense, uh, you know, Josh Gaddis talked in the offseason, too, about more explosive plays, wanted more explosive plays from his offense. We saw some of that last week. We saw that with Zach Charbonnet's 70-yard touchdown run. And the distribution last year from, or last week from Michigan, they had 
uh, nine different guys catch passes, seven different guys carry the football. Uh, that diversity is so hard to defend. They were split real evenly with their yardage. They gained 450 some yards, about 250 rushing, about 220, uh, uh, about 250 rushing, 220 passing. So Michigan's off to a great start when you talk about trying to do some of those things they talked about in the off season. And defensively, uh, Michigan looks like it just picked up where it does season to season under defensive coordinator Don Brown. Guys like Quiddy Pay, Aiden Hutchinson, the outstanding defensive ends, the real leaders of this team along with Carlo Kemp on that defensive line. Uh, they're excited about what this defense brings and we're very excited for this 2020 campaign. Doug Karsh, John Jansen back at the Big House. Michigan and Michigan State will kick it off just afternoon. Jim Harbaugh coming up shortly, but first, the John Jansen keys to the game, offense, defense, special teams. Offensively, hey, we, we talked about Joe Milton take the safe play. That's great, and I want to see him continue to do that, but take some explosive opportunities down the field. Get those 20-plus yards plays, and on defense, it's about securing the middle of that line. Make sure that the, this Michigan State team doesn't get on track by running the football. Show that you can stop the run, and special teams, when you get in position to make plays, be good and, and put points on the board. All right. You'll hear from John at halftime of this one, Wolverines and Spartans. I'll be working the first two rows of the stands down below. Is, uh, no access to the field, but be reporting from down there from field level for this one, Michigan and Michigan State. You'll hear from the head coach of the Wolverines coming up shortly, Jim Harbaugh. You're listening to Michigan Football from Learfield IMG College. Jamal is in Ann Arbor. All right, we're back down here near field level as the Spartans and Wolverines are warming up, getting ready for today's, today's battle at the Big House. A lot of excitement surrounding this game for the Maize and Blue, of course. They're a heavy favorite in this football game. Trying to make it three straight in the rivalry, and if they do make it three straight, that would be their longest stretch since winning six consecutive games from 2002 to 2007. This game is in the DNA of head coach Jim Harbaugh. Went three and one as a player, now three and one as a three and two rather as a head coach here at Michigan. And he sat down and spoke with the radio man Jim Brandstatter about the Spartans, the rivalry, and what it means to him. Jim, you've got a rivalry game. It's two and two weeks. Talk to me about your approach with your team as you get ready for Michigan State. Well, state week, you um you know, you want to let the uh, the team know that uh, what, what the game is going to be like, and it's going to be uh, both teams really emotionally invested. Wow, you get uh, from the time they get to the the stadium, uh, and then right to the, the final whistle. It's going to be a hard hitting affair. It's uh, all out play by everybody on every unit, offense, defense, and special teams, and uh, and it's also going to be a lot of fun. So uh, you know, go uh, go let it rip. Uh, you know, that's, that's what we plan to do. Um, you know, Michigan State, they always say, um, you know, this is a, this is as physical as team as, as we ever play in the Big Ten each and every year. So, uh, don't imagine they're going to be turning the ball over. I'm sure they're working on that. Uh, we can't expect any kind of, uh, gifts like that. Anticipate it's going to be, you know, one of those knockdown drag out type of football games. All right. That was my next question. Uh, the team that Michigan State, put out there against Rutgers is not going to be the team you probably see in Ann Arbor today, will it be? You turn the ball over uh, seven times, it, it's uh, nearly impossible. The metrics will tell you that it's about 100% uh, guaranteed win for the for the other team. So no question, uh, Coach Tucker and his staff have addressed that, rectified it, and, uh, you know, this is, gonna, this is uh, always a game that has uh, to be earned. A, a victory always has to be earned in this game because, uh, you know, both teams are going to be giving it their very best. You said last week that you really wanted to see from your guys the most important thing was be assignment sound. What's the look for you for your club this week as you all go, to go out against Michigan State? The same thing. I mean, everybody, you want everybody doing their job uh, and doing their job well and not trying to do too, 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 do too much, trying to do somebody else's job. I also feel that uh, – there were some guys that really, really played spectacular. Uh, Mike Michael Barrett, right. on the defensive side last last week. Donovan Jeter, how oh, he's asserted himself as a, as a heck of a good player to go along with Hayden Hutchinson and and Quiddy Pay. The two corners last week played played extremely well. And um, you just feel also on on the offensive side uh, with the, the amount of good backs and receivers that we had that this can. 
there's improvement can be made and it can be made in a lot of different directions. So, um, yeah, we want to, we want to go out there and, and do our job and do it, do it really well. That's where it starts. Um, but you know, I, I think there's a real excitement on the team of, you know, let's just see how good we, how good can we get? You know, let's, uh, and they're, they're invested in that and they're, you know, working very hard at it. We've had a good week of practice and, and now it's time to go compete for the state championship. Oh, that's a great attitude to have. Jim, listen, you brought the jug home last week. Bring Paul Bunyan home this week. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, gotta take care of Paul. <laughs> Thanks so much, coach. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, so many memorable moments from this series going way back to 1940. Tom Harmon scored three touchdowns in a 21-14 Michigan win on his way to the Heisman Trophy. 1997, Michigan six interceptions in East Lansing. That team went on to win the national championship. And, of course, last year's blowout victory, 44-10, right here at the big house. Blake Corum, you see there, as we take another look at some of the players on the field, outstanding freshman running back from Virginia, actually was in on the first play last week at Minnesota, showed his explosiveness. You see the guys kind of getting ready here. That's a real good look at the offensive line, a group that has really been unheralded, so to speak, for new starters, but guys who've been in the program, guys who know what it's about, guys who Ed Warner's done a really good job with molding them and meshing them together. And we talked to uh, center Andrew Vestardis, a fifth-year guy, and he just talked about the communication they have together and that communication is so, so important when you talk about the offensive line. We certainly hope they can keep rolling from what they laid out there last week in Minneapolis. All right, we got a glimpse of it last week in Minneapolis, watching a football game with basically nobody in the stands. I mean, there's a few family members being let in, but there's only going to be a few hundred people in attendance here at the big house, a place that is usually jammed with over 100,000 people. You do see some cardboard cutouts around, about 3,500 of those, but not quite the same effect, that's for sure. So we asked the players, what was it like? What is it like playing at a huge stadium with nobody in attendance? Well, it was definitely different. A couple of big runs we had. I'm used to hearing the crowd noise and stuff when we have a big play, but um, without that, you know, you're just kind of looking around. You don't hear a whistle or anything. You see one of our guys taking off down the field. Um, it's definitely unique. Um, I much would prefer fans there, but you know, due to the circumstances, it can't happen. After a big play, you kind of want to get up and, and hear hear some crowd noise, but uh, but there wasn't a whole lot. But yeah, it d definitely did feel like practice, and um, so it wasn't too much different. It wasn't too much of a, of an adjustment for our guys. It was not like how I expected. Uh, I thought it was going to be just a really weird environment, but I mean, once you start playing football, once that once the first kickoff, once that first kickoff happens. Um, it's like it's it's what you've been doing since you were eight years old. Uh, so so the the no fans aspect was surprisingly not that big of a big of a deal. It definitely was weird. The energy was off for sure. But I mean, once the game gets going, you kind of just don't even think about it for real. You know, it's going to be very very different. That's for sure. The home field advantage is something that we're all kind of waiting to see how that plays out for teams. Uh, will you see more upsets in the Big Ten this year because the visiting teams don't have to deal with that kind of stuff? Right now we see the guys here kind of wrapping up their warm-ups, going over some special team stuff as they get ready to head back in before they come out for this game in just less than a half hour now. But I think it's going to be important for these teams to create their own momentum. And the tricky part is not only creating momentum, but taking that momentum snap to snap, series to series, even quarter to quarter, when you don't have that, just that rush of excitement after a big play, after a sack, after a touchdown, uh, especially a place like this with, with so many people behind you and helping just kind of carry you and lift you up through those tough moments. It's going to be an interesting day, an interesting season for sure with no fans in attendance. But fans aren't the only things missing from games this year. Uh, the media contingent is way, way, way down. Normally for a game like this on a Michigan Saturday, there are about 500 media credentialed. Well, this year, there are only 40. So a very different look for people covering the football. Game. Everyone's socially distanced. We're every third seat. Uh, everyone has to wear a mask. Um, when it comes to the things that we do in games, we're still going to be doing a lot of it via computer. You know, statistics, you know, information, the sharing of that information will all still be done digitally. And then, you know, when the game's over with, everything's done via Zoom. The Zooms have become part of reality. 
everyone's learned to adapt and so we've we've had a great system in place with a lot of great people both from the TV studio side as well as our communication staff that have worked together to you know, to put these zooms together for the media that once the game's over with we'll have players available via zoom we record them and we share them with all the media those who are on site and those that are working remotely and you know it's uh, even the same thing exists with our own radio and TV uh, stuff that we do. It's recorded and shared for purposes of uh, television broadcasting. We will begin a uh, reminder that if you have a question. Our student athletes and coaches have been outstanding uh, through this whole pandemic and the challenges that, you know, interviewing, communicating with the media and the public. So it takes a little bit more time to do Zoom interviews and Zoom calls. Um, and so they've been fantastic. Our next question comes from John Neal. Go ahead, John. Looking forward to, to playing uh, a game at Michigan Stadium, even though it's going to be drastically different in terms of the, you know, less than a thousand fans or a thousand fans, and you know the, the unique challenges that everything presents this year. All right, a very different look for the media covering college football this year. A lot of Zoom interviews, uh, very little in person, actually no in person uh, contact with the players. Uh, so that's going to be a challenge for everybody, but, you know, it's a challenge that everybody has to just kind of rise up to and, and, and deal with, quite frankly. Uh, but, but what a weird scene coming into the stadium today. Usually you see the tailgaters, you see just people having fun, um, people gearing up for a football game, and very little traffic around the big, horse, big house, of course, uh, and no tailgating allows, so you don't see anybody in the stands. Um, and look at the, uh, the cutouts. It's a great view of the cutouts. They're going to be kind of spread at the north and south end zones. Uh, go to mgoblue.com. There's going to be at least three more home games this year, maybe four home games. So if you want to get one stuck here, uh, check out all the details, and we encourage you to do so. Uh, a couple of restrictions. You can only submit a picture of yourself so there's no group photos. And the thing I love about these is you look around, you see the pets in there. Yes, you can get a cutout of your pet hanging out at the big house on a game day. How absolutely cool is that? I mean, that is just... Um, it's just fantastic. You see SpongeBob in attendance. And when I saw some of the video earlier, too, you know, I, I saw Jalen Rose. I saw Tom Brady. So there are certainly some uh, very famous Michigan alums in attendance here, in spirit at least, with the presence of these cutouts. Uh, it's something you've seen all over the country, Major League Baseball, the NBA Finals, kind of a really, really cool thing. And I think it's just a little something for the players to look, look for. Um, they get in the end zone, they hit pay dirt, they can kind of look up and, and kind of have some fun with that. All right, one of the great performances in Michigan, 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 Michigan State history occurred in 1981, October 10th to be exact. Butch Wolfhawk carried the rock for 253 yards, and we recently sat down and did a Zoom call with Butch from his home in Texas. And I had the career high in, in carries that, that particular day. But the amazing thing is I fumbled twice, and he left me in the game. That's not something that Bo would normally do. If I fumble once, I'm out the game on the, on the sidelines thinking about it. But with those carries that I had, he allowed me to continue, even though we had a, a, a terrible time in terms of fumbling the ball. Well worth it, I'm sure. But was that the sorest you've been after a game, considering the workload that you had? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I Years later, I was in the NFL with the New York Giants and set the record for most carries in a game with 43. Uh, and it, it was broken later on by uh, Jamie Morris, believe it or not. And you know, that's, that's a coincidence. The two Michigan guys had the two top carries ever in the NFL. But that game uh, gave me a, a glimpse of what it would be like to really carry the load, like a Marcus Allen was doing at USC at the time. And I, I, I didn't expect to have that from, from Bo, but that's what our team needed at the time. They were uh, doubling up on Anthony Carter and trying to stop him. So he wanted to go exclusive to the running game, and it worked for us. So you went 3-1 and one during your career against Michigan State. What did that rivalry mean to you, and I guess what does it mean to you now all these years later? Well, it's, it's kind of a personal rivalry from back in the day. I, I didn't have a girl at the University of Michigan, but I had a couple of them at Michigan State. So, you know, I was always, uh, you know, heading towards East Lansing when the, when the game was over. So it, it was big to me. My girlfriend was in the stands, and, and I, I was very much appreciative of having a big game against the in-state rival. You know, some people may not recall that you were a Big Ten track star as well, a champion in the 200. Um, I guess when you look back at that, how did you balance those things during your career? 
I didn't balance them at all. Uh, I was, I was the, when I came to Michigan, I was a better track athlete. I'd won the national title in the 100 and 200 meters. So I was probably a better track guy than I was a football guy. But when you're at Michigan, you just get consumed by football. And I tried running it for the first two years. And yeah, I made all America my sophomore year and was trying to get to the Olympic trials. I ran the Olympic trials as well, but that was the year they didn't have the Olympics in 1980. So it, it kind of made a decision for me at that point. I had to give up track and focus more on, on football. The track was my first love and I always was. You talk about being a track star. You had a 92 yard touchdown against Wisconsin, a play that was, I guess, simple in its essence, but just a, a beautiful play as you look back in the memory banks. What do you recall about that moment? Um, well, you know, that, that record is still there, but uh, unfortunately, when you, when you think about how do you get a long run like that, a 92 yard long run, the quarterback's got to get sacked at the 20 yard line or, or they got to have a, a, a messed up a kick return or anything, but it's not that usual to, to have the ball at the eight yard line like that. So that record may take a while to be broken because the situation has to be just right. But when I remember following Kurt Becker, our, um, our All-American guard, and he went to the left and I saw some guys that he was taking out. So I just bounced it to the right. I didn't, I didn't expect to see wide open field. But when I did, I just knew it was over. I, I didn't think anybody on the field could catch me, but it was all due to the linemen and their blocking. I had probably three or four guys that were eventual All-Americans on the front line. People asked me about comparing me to former running backs. I'm like, no, I'm, I can't compare to the running backs in Michigan, but I will compare my line. I may have had the best line in Michigan when I was there. You played in a couple Rose Bowls or on a couple Rose Bowl teams. You were three times first team all Big Ten. You won that track championship. What's your greatest memory from your time in Ann Arbor? Uh, my, well, that's a loaded question. My best memory is not in sports at all. It's just hanging with the guys in the, in the locker room and hanging with the guys in the dorm and just, you know, having that type of camaraderie. You don't have that when you lead sports. You know, you, you got your business guy and you meet with people on lunch and dinner and, you know, maybe on the golf course, but they, you never find that type of camaraderie with a bunch of guys. And that's probably something that I always miss. That was the, the biggest thing that hit me. I'm still in contact with all my teammates in Michigan. When we talk to ex-players, we hear just interesting stories about relationships with Bo. How was your relationship with him? I think you know that answer. <laughs> Bo and I did not get along. Um, he didn't like my style, and I didn't like his style. But so what? I mean, I, just because we didn't get along um, didn't mean that we were not on the same you know, team to, to, to win and have success. Uh, Bo... He wanted a certain type of running back, and I wasn't that type of running back. Uh, I'm sure he can say years later he didn't necessarily know what uh, Anthony Carter was going to bring to the team as well, because he didn't have that type of receiver in his history either. But Bo would want me to stick it up in the gut, in the hole, and you get, you get the ball, you follow what the play says, and that gummit, I don't care if the hole's not there, you ram it up somebody's back. Well, I, that didn't make sense to me. So. <laughs> You know, I, I, I had speed. I, I figured I can, if there's no hole there, I can bounce it. Uh, so he didn't like my running style initially, but we, we kind of blended it a little bit. And I did what he wanted me to do, and he allowed me to do some things that I wanted to do. You know, given all of that, Butch, what did you learn from him that you took forward in your life that benefited you? Uh, discipline. I've never known anybody to be more disciplined than him. Uh, Bo Schembechler would watch film you know, constantly. So if he told you something in practice, it's because he watched film of that team, you know, over and over and over again. Uh, and then he wanted you to get it as well. So Bo was definitely a disciplinarian. And in terms of what you ate, what you did in your workout, your lifting weights, I mean, encompassing and all, but watching film as well. So yeah, he, he gave me a lot of discipline. Then when I went to the pros, I had uh, Bill Parcells with the Giants, who was the same type of discipline guy. So that's what wins to me in football is you got to have that discipline. What a pleasure spending a few minutes with, with Butch Wolfhawk. Now just 14 minutes to kick off, folks. Enjoy the game today. Thanks for being with us. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. And if we think that way, all of us, Everything that you do, you take into consideration what effect does it have on my team. 
think what a great thing it is to be a part of something that is the team. We're going to win it. We're going to win the championship again because we're going to play as a team. Better than anybody else in this conference, we're going to play together as a team. We're going to believe in each other. We're not going to criticize each other. We're not going to talk about each other. We're going to encourage each other. And when we play as a team, when the old season is over, you and I know it's going to be Michigan again. Michigan. Good morning and welcome to Michigan Stadium for this, the 141st season of Michigan football and the 113th meeting between Michigan and Michigan State. At this time, we'd like to extend a warm Michigan Stadium welcome to our visitors from Michigan State. Spartans, welcome to the big house. musical heritage of the University of Michigan, the Michigan Marching Band plays Varsity. Here from the big house, everybody going. 
This is the University of Michigan. What a football game we're going to have here this afternoon. You are looking live at a sold out 103,000 Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. The football game for Ann Arbor. The nation will rock with the praises of the Maze and Blue this evening. Where we respect integrity and honor excellence. The jubilation and cheering long into the night. For Midwestern values, hard work, determination, and an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. The old season is over. It's going to be this year. Yeah. We are the best university in the world. Students and athletes and professors achieving at the highest level. You better believe it. This is our legacy. Go blue. And our future. We are proud members of the Big Ten Conference in pursuit of national championships. We this championship. We have won more games than any team in the country. No one has won more. We believe in football. Championship football. We shy away from no challenge or opponent. We bow to no man. We bow to no program. We are Michigan. Michigan.